What is going on guys, Brown here and welcome back to the F1 career mode here today for the very final part of this season. We finally got there, it's been a couple of months but we've finally got to the final round. You would have seen there the R&D, we're going to put that on hold till after this race because what's really the point. Um, but this is it one final time into Abu Dhabi because this was a couple of weeks ago it's the actual Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and hopefully it can be better than that because that race was awful we had a poor first run and now we're on to the last run and we've gone that's definitely track limits and up to the line and it's going to be a lonely P21 if you want to see more videos like this let me know down below and make sure to subscribe and like as well let's get into the Abu Dhabi it's time World Prix for one final race in this year's Formula One World Championship 2010 saw four drivers in contention for the title coming into this race with Sebastian Vettel prevailing to become the youngest world champion to date is there one last sting of the tail awaiting us today well it's time to find out here comes the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We have 21 corners here at the Yas Marina circuit, 12 to the left and 9 to the right. It's a total lap distance of just over 3.4 miles. There are two long back straights opening up some passing opportunities into the braking zones. And we expect average lap speeds of around 123 miles an hour. Joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Why don't we start by talking about Valtteri Bottas? They've had a fantastic campaign. It's been a wonderful year, and they come into this weekend's Grand Prix as a fully deserving champion. It really is well deserved. I wouldn't say it's been a faultless title challenge, but certainly one that has been consistent and well managed. Here's hoping they let off a bit of steam today and give us an exciting race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Vettel, Ricardo, Valtteri Bottas. They've taken a grid penalty and Albon, Stroll, Perez, Ocon and Daniel Kvyat. Sainz, Norris, Antonio Giovinazzi and Gasly, Verstappen, Raikkonen, Roman Grosjean and Brown. Magnussen, Russell, Latifi, and Callum Island. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. So we get promoted to P18 after some penalties. The strategy for the race is going to be starting on the softs, going to the mediums, and then finishing the race on the softs as well. So let's get into it then for one final time. The five red lights, come on. It's lights out and away we go. And we're away here in Abu Dhabi. It looks like a good start from the Ferrari. Alexander Albon down the inside. We're going to go down the inside of everyone. And everyone stopped. And that's because Alex Albon's been spun round. And we're going to slot through the gap where everyone's left. Down to Alex Albon. And we have had a great start. We're up into P5. Let's have a replay of what happened here. Down the inside we go and everyone... Albon spun it and we just had to there was just a, a nice little gap to slot in this is the onboard from Alex Albon and this race is already better than the real life Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and Alex what are you doing just went for a gap that didn't exist this is why he's been dropped by Red Bull just absolutely and everyone's just sat here and then he, there was a small little gap and I went for it. Everyone just sat there queuing at the cheese counter. And yeah, you can see Alex Albon here. There's no way he was going to make that. I think he realised that, tried to back out, but then it was too late. Charles Leclerc was always going to come across. But it's actually made contact with um, the Renault there of Daniel Ricciardo. This is the off board. You can see he just absolutely sends it spins him round and then yeah again you can see the gap as we just just about get through skipping on them we're on the coming towards the end of the safety car period you can see the lights are off the safety car and it's mercedes ferrari mercedes ferrari renault mclaren brown gp as the top six 
Thanks. Safety card. Safety card. It's a very long. It's surprising how how long the safety card came in for because it is a very. It's quite away from that triple chicane to the final corner. When is Lewis Hamilton gonna launch it with right on the back of Carlos Sainz's gearbox, ready to pounce? Coming out the final corner, Lewis Hamilton's gone, and we are away again in this Grand Prix. You can see we have a bit of damage to the front wing that was getting through that little slot between the racing point and Alex Albon. As down the inside. Try Sergio Perez there, and we are all over the place with this front wing understeering everywhere. As we went wide there, Perez slots in in front of us, and this is going to be a painful, good start, very, very lucky start from P21 up to P5. But now we're just going to drop like an absolute brick. Is I think this is going to turn into another China. If you remember that race, we literally we had such a good start. We got up to about P7, P8, and then we dropped like a stone. If we go wide again in large stroll, it's through now. And this is just going to be the pattern of the race, it seems. Confirmed. Now skipping on, we have the Renault. Of Esteban Ocon behind us, we've gone a little bit wide there. And now through round the port, around the port, and Esteban Ocon, he's clipped us. We've been spun round by the Frenchman. What is he doing? And now we're going to come back on him. What am I doing? We just come back on the track right in front of George Russell. He's got a damage from wing. Ah, oh, car really realism probably would be an absolute bit right now. And I'm going to pit to change this front wing because it's absolutely dreadful. We're followed in by George Russell. And this is a replay then of what happened. You can see the understeer, massive oversteer moment. Now heading round the port. We were just minding our own business and then just comes across. What is he doing? We did well to kind of hold it. Stop it going the full way round. But what is Esteban Ocon doing there? It's absolute joke. Absolute joke. But you can see he just he just leaves us no space. Fair enough. He is the quicker car, but what is he doing? He's got to give us space there. You can see here going round he just comes across the mate. Let me know what you think of that down below. But for me his death is Jesus. It's definitely a puncher, if it was realistic, but we put it on reduced. Now though, back into the race, we're going to have to change our front wing, that I was going to do anyway. We've gone into the mediums and now this is going to be a pretty lonely way race for us. We're only five laps in and already this has been better than 55 laps of the, the actual 2020 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So now we just need to manage the pace, we go on all the way to lap 14 because we were just managing the pace, we are all over the back of Kevin Magnussen but we all know this track is absolutely diabolical. It looks nice and it looks alright, there's definitely some changes they could make. We, we were right on the back of Kevin Magnussen, we just couldn't get close enough to overtake him and now we've fallen away from Kevin Magnussen and fallen back into Estevan Ocon and now he's actually going to pass us cleanly I tried to keep my nose in because you know what I'm like someone spins me I'll never let that go be so aggressive to him but we just really didn't have the pace compared to them so now we're skipping all the way on to lap 19 and we wanted to pit but we had our teammate Callum Eilert and he was going to follow us in. So good job I noticed that because 
that would have been absolutely dire. Like, I just saw the arrow just behind me, so I had to bail out at literally the, the last second. We've lost out to Daniel Kavir, who was behind both of us. You see, he just follows us in, and I just had to turn out of it, completely cut the final corner, because I'd already... So we already wanted to go into the pits and then there's the place we lost to the Russian. And now skipping all the way on to lap 20 and we've been caught by Alex Albon. We've had to obviously stay out again so this is the same lap. And the tyres are gone. Albon is with the P16 so he hasn't really been able to recover this into the pits though one lap later we're going on to the soft compound tyres have we done enough though to beat out Callum Eilert? the answer is no you can see him there he's already passed us so now we've got seven laps can we catch and pass our teammate for what could be his final race in our car of depending on what I really want to do with him I think he's definitely shown his strength but we'll see we'll see what he has to offer as on lap 26 we caught him I'm gonna dive bomb him down the inside he's tried to pull it back we've got him into the chicane but now he's gonna have the better exit and try and go to the inside of us but we just about managed to stay ahead and we're getting and he has actually got us but we've sent it back down the inside and cut the corner and we have got the move done there on Callum Eilert I'll give him his G. he pushed us if you remember way back start of the season we had Guan Yu Zhou who was absolutely dreadful we brought in Callum Eilert the British Grand Prix and he has definitely pushed us much much more than the Chinese driver all British lineup, and I think he's definitely cementing his place. But Lewis Hamilton, he may have not been a championship winning season, but he's going to end it in style and win the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We are going to come home to finish our opening chapter in our small history of our our team. We've had many highs, we've had many lows, but if this season is the end of the race. We'll see you in Palm Ferme. That's it then. They've taken the win here as we wrap up another fantastic Formula One season. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. So there we go then, that's been your 2020 season, we got there in the end, I definitely did drag this out way, way too long, but we've got here now, season 2, and 2021 is on the horizon, this is your final championship results, well Steve Valtteri Bottas wrapping up the title in Mexico, Lewis Hamilton did everything good. Um, Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel right behind them this is before the um, the performance upgrade when they got absolutely nerfed out of existence in terms of the constructors we've done very well for our very first year we beat Williams, we beat Haas 27 points so that is that's a race win, fastest lap and a 10th place if you put it in that term so that's not too bad over the course of 22 rounds obviously the first four rounds were very painful but I think Spain kind of when we got those first points everything seemed to go up we got the great result in Monaco 
So we got hit with re reality back in Baku. But then Canada, France was another setback. Austria was was okay. Silverstone obviously wasn't great. But there was definitely moments in that season. Of course, Singapore, when we completely bottled it as well. So our final upgrade's going into next season. Of course, it doesn't really matter. Um, because they'll be on the car for Australia. And I kind of wish now looking back on it that I had done a custom season. and But I'll do that for season 3. And now we have the big decision. Do we keep Isla or do we go for a different driver? I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger with that. And you know, have, I'll keep you guessing on who I'm going to sign. So that's been season 1 of the career mode. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.